Welcome back, and uh, very timely as a follow-up to have back with us today our good friend Lori Cardoza Moore. Lori is one of those frontline warriors. She's the founder of the President of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. Uh, first of all, you can go to pjtn.org is the website, and uh, keep track of all the things that she's uh, involved in. Pjtn.org. Lori, I was thinking earlier, where do I start with you? <laughs> mm. Uh, just so much going on. Um, first of all, the uh, the riots at Yale and Columbia University this morning are raging as we speak. Uh, the Jews of those uh, universities have been told to stay home, don't even come close to the campus. And these people are yelling death to America on the very soil that gives them the right to say that. Did you ever think we'd see anti-Semitism at this level? Uh, I knew that we would bury one day. That's why the Lord called me to create the documentary, The Forgotten People, Christianity and the Holocaust, which your viewers can find on our website at pjtn.org. But in that film, I knew that eventually we were going to have to be able to wake up Christians because we have to ask ourselves the question, if anti-Semitism and the Holocaust could take place in an educated, wealthy, Judeo-Christian nation like Germany at the time, could it happen in the United States of America? And we are watching it unfold before our eyes. All I have to say to those people that are protesting, they, death to America, death to Israel, well, you know what? Take a number, get in line. Those people need to be arrested because they are violating the civil rights of the Jewish students on the campuses. The Jewish students on the campus do not leave. They shouldn't be told to leave. They need to tell their opposition they have to go. They are the ones that need to rise up and file lawsuits against the, the campus, against the local police department, if they do not uphold their freedoms and their rights. This is outrageous that this is happening in the United States. It's all been targeted. This has been going on for years. The, the reason why our kids are marching in the streets, it's not just the college kids, Perry. You know we've been fighting this battle with education, K through 12, for over a decade. We saw the content in the textbooks. We knew what was going to happen with, the, with this type of content, that it was going to turn our children in America against the Jews. So should we be surprised that we see seven-year-olds marching in the streets, like in Washington State? I was just out in Washington um, last Saturday speaking to Pastor Mark Bilson's congregation, telling them, are you ready? Are you ready to stand up? Because now this is happening on your watch when you have teachers teaching seven-year-olds about Jew hatred. This has, it's crossed the line. It's over the top. It's unacceptable. And the only way we're going to reverse the course in this country and build greater support for our, our Jewish brethren in Israel, as we have done in the past, is if Christians rise up. We cannot be silent. It is shocking to me the lack of involvement from the Christian community. We see all these rallies going on that are pro-Hamas. Well, you know what? Where are the pro-Israel rallies? Now, we've been in Florida. We've been in Tennessee. There have been rallies going on there. But wh where is the rest of the country? Where is the rest of the support for Israel? Because if ever there was a time for the church to rise up, God is watching. He is he's standing by, just like he told the prophet Obadiah in the last days, he was going to wipe out the descendants of Edom because they stood by while their brother Jacob was held in captivity, and they did nothing. Well, Obadiah was receiving that prophecy for this hour. And God is watching what we are going to do. Even Yeshua said, whatever you do to the least of these, my brethren, that you do unto me. All right. Quite a few things here to unpack. Um, just as a sidebar for a moment, isn't these demonstrations when they yell death to America, isn't that insurrection? Absolutely, it's insurrection. But where's the where's the left? Where are the Democrats calling to arrest these people and throw them in prison like we still have the January 6th people that are still being held in prison? What about the what about the hostages that are still being held? And there's silence, crickets from our government officials from Biden about releasing these Israeli hostages, releasing the American hostages. I saw the the Prime Minister of France. He was being interviewed by a reporter the other yesterday, and they were asking him about this. 
And he said, you know, it's funny that you don't, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's funny how you don't bring up the fact that there are people, there were tw over 1,200 people that were slaughtered on October 7th. Why don't you bring that up? Why don't you talk about that? Why is it always about the, the Palestinians? I want to hear support for the Jews, basically, is what he is saying. How many leaders do we know, Perry, that are willing, that have the courage to say things like that? Thank God for the prime minister of France for doing so. Yeah, every once in a while he says the right thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let, let me ask you one other question to build a foundation here. We are now seeing the results. I don't know if it is a, um, you, you know, trying to reprogram people, but it's training there in these in these universities. And now we're seeing the results of this thing called replacement theology. When I've had you on in the past, Lori, I get off the air and there's emails from Christian leaders who believe firmly in replacement theology, which basically means um, the church has replaced Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, is that still a factor, you think? Oh my gosh, Perry, it's unbelievable how much it's growing. And let's call them what they are, they're anti-Semites. They, the fact that they would even suggest that God is done with the Jews, it's basically washing out or wiping out the Jewish people and saying, God's finished with you. It's all about the church. It is not about the church. The scriptures are very clear. In the last days, 10 men from the nations will come and grab hold of the seat seat, the fringes of a Jew, like the rabbi you just had on and say, we want to go with you because we know God is with you. Well, for all you anti-Semites, all you replacement theology supporters and supersessionists, how can you justify your, your belief with, that, with those verses in text of the Bible that you supposedly read? The problem is, Perry, most Christians, unfortunately, I hate to say this, and this is what I come up against all the time, because I have Christians who attend the speaking events I do in local communities, and they bring this narrative up. And I say to them, show me in the text of the Bible, your scriptures, show me where your theology is correct. If you, if you can show me, give me a Bible verse, I'll believe you. But they can't, they can't show that because they are just restating and reciting Jew hatred that has been around for 2,000 years. I'm just waiting to see, where are these people? Why aren't they speaking out? Why do they hold to these values? What about Romans chapters 9 through 11? I remember interviewing a pastor, a well-known leader, who said that he believed in replacement theology. He believes God's done with the Jews. And I said to him, what do you do with Romans 9 through 11? And he says, I call that blink theology. I said, blink theology, what does that mean? I'd never heard that before. And he said, it means that when I come across passages in the Bible that don't fit my theology, I blink past them. Well, you know what? God has a message for those shepherds like that pastor who are leading his flock astray. There will be a judgment for them for what they're doing. If ever there was a time, Perry, that we as Bible-believing Christians need to crack open our Bible, and not just in the New Testament, we need to go back to the beginning. We need to go to the first five books of Moses, the Torah, and read the foundation, read through the scriptures, read through the writings, read through the prophets, and see what God said he was going to do with Israel. This is our greatest hour as the body of believers, of, of Christians. If we can't rise up right now to stand with our Jewish brethren, judgment will come to us, as God told the prophet. One other quick question before I take a break, Lori. Do you think that this current event not only in Israel with the war going on, and now what we're seeing on the campuses in America, that somehow it is reuniting Jews? It absolutely is. And, you know, there's been division, just like the rabbi said, you know, he believes in the two-state solution. Well, with all due respect, no. There is never going to be a two-state solution. We are re reminded repeatedly in the scriptures not to remove our brother's ancient boundary stones. Right. And that's exactly what we're doing. 
And you brought up a very good um, point when you talked about, wasn't Gaza an example of the two-state solution? Yeah, it was a test. It was a test to see if a two-state solution, if these people really want a two-state solution. Mm -hmm. They don't. They want death to the Jews. They want death to Israel. They want death to America. They want death to the great Satan and the little Satan, the pigs and the apes. They're referring to America and Israel. Why? Because of our faith. Because the thing that unites us, Jews and Christians, and yes, the Jewish community is being reunited, but so is the Jewish and Christian community. Un, it, it's unprecedented, unlike ever before. Christians are reaching out to their Jewish communities, their Jewish brethren, telling them, we're standing with you. They are having rallies in the streets, but unfortunately, the media is not covering that. And this is the greatest tra tragedy, is because there is a propaganda war going on, and that's why PJTN exists. Our propaganda war is fighting the propaganda in media and in education, K through 12 education. Because if we don't take the narrative, if we can't push out the narrative, then we're going to lose the battle because what's gonna happen is Jews and Christians are gonna become discouraged. They're gonna lose heart. They're gonna lose faith. Just like what says, what the scriptures say, the prophets foretold would happen in the Bible. We have to rise up, we have to stand up, we've got to get our message out. And that's why our involvement with the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, our media that we are producing that's on, we've got 20, we're up to 20 global media partners along with Dub TV, who is broadcasting our Focus on Israel shows. If you as a Christian don't understand and, and, and um, understand the biblical, your biblical responsibility, your biblical duty, to stand with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel, I encourage you, go to the media page on pjtn.org and watch. There's a hundred episodes there. Binge watch, learn, because I'm hearing from so many of our PJTN watchmen now who are watching our shows and saying, you've been saying this all these years. You've been trying to bring Christians and Jews together through PJTN all these years. And look, Look at what is happening. Look at what is unfolding before our eyes. It is prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah. Look at the, I mean, Perry, even the, the um, solar eclipse, the warning, because we all know that solar eclipses in the Bible are warning messages, they're omens to the nations. And that omen was right over dead center, the United States of America. We have been marked with the sign by Almighty God himself. And we are going to be judged and weighed in the balance based on what we do or what we don't do to, for our Jewish brethren right now. All right, let me take a quick break. Go to pjtn.org. That's Lori's website. Under the media page, you can watch those episodes, pjtn.org, and support what she does. We'll, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, and always an honor to have with us uh, Lori Cardozo Moore. She's the founder of the President Proclaiming Justice to the Nation, and her website, pjtn.org, is very resourceful. Uh, let me encourage you to go to the website, check out all the resources that are, especially on the media page, and support her. Lori, just so many questions in so little time. Um, mm. Eric Metaxas has been talking about this in his book, his letter to the American church, talks about we need to look back to Germany, because here we go again. Um, do you think the American church understands that? Sadly, Perry, no. And when I say the American church doesn't understand it, it's the leadership. It's pastors. You know, we just saw the horrific interview with Tucker Carlson and the Lutheran pastor, the supposed Lutheran pastor from Christ at the Checkpoint, a fraud Christian organization, they are not legitimate. They are not teaching and, and bringing the biblical message. They are, I don't know what Bible that they read from, but it isn't the Bible that you and I read. They are promoting anti-Semitism. They are falsely accusing. They are actually in violation of the Ninth Commandment, falsely accusing their Jewish brethren of crimes that, are, that do not exist. The crimes that exist are because of the Palestinians, the Arabs, 
We know 80, over 80% 80 of Christians have fled Bethlehem and they've gone to places like Nazareth. Nazareth is not governed by the Palestinian Authority. Nazareth is governed by the Israeli government. In Nazareth, you have Christians, you have Jews, you have Muslims, you have Druze who all live in the same community together, and their rights and their freedoms are protected, but not so much in Bethlehem. Tucker Carlson did this inter interview with this pastor, but he never picked up the phone to call Pastor Corey. Steve Corey is a pastor. He, His father was a pastor before him in Bethlehem. This congregation of Christians in Bethlehem can't get birth certificates, they can't get marriage certificates, they can't get death certificates. Why? Because their congreg congregation doesn't tow the party line, the Palestinian Authority party line. So I don't know why Tucker felt so led. It's really suspicious because Tucker didn't even ask hardball questions of this pastor. He allowed this pastor to falsely accuse the Jews of targeting Palestinians. October 7th didn't happen because the Jews or Israel invaded Gaza. It was Hamas in Gaza who invaded Israel, who slaughtered and butchered babies, children, Moms, dads, grandparents put baked babies in ovens. And this pastor has the audacity, or supposed Lutheran pastor has the audacity to accuse the Jews of targeting the Palestinians. It's fraud. And, and Tucker Carlson should be ashamed of himself. We're going to put out a public letter to Carlson and tell him, ask him, where he, where he gets his theology, what scriptures, again, does he base his theology, or even that pastor, that Lutheran pastor, Isaac, where does he get his theology from? I can assure you, it doesn't come from the Bible that we all share and read from. Yeah, I was uh, like you, my brain's on tilt from that interview. I thought, oh, my stars. Uh, he has such a following, and then to allow that, um, I, I don't know where you go with that. But let me come back to some other thing that's very controversial. As you know, over the weekend, the uh, foreign aid package got passed. Ninety-five billion is going to Israel. Of course, the main the main uh, benefactor there was Ukraine, Taiwan. Uh, I realize ninety-five billion certainly helps, but it does seem to come with a lot of strings attached. What you're thinking? Oh, absolutely. The problem with their their package is the money should have gone to Israel. The threats against Israel and the Israeli government, this is how Biden manipulates what's going on in Israel, how Bibi Netanyahu executes his war. It is outrageous what is happening. Ukraine is a whole different issue. I, you know, there's a lot of corruption that's going on in Ukraine. And I'm not going to get into that battle, but the fact that we are threatening, we're giving more money to Ukraine than we are to our loyal ally, Israel, in the Middle East. No, it's very, it's, it's very frustrating, Perry, to see what we're doing. I have no problem giving money to Israel, because protecting Israel against the, these Islamist regi regimes is, is so important for America and for our freedoms, because what is going on in Israel is coming to the United States. And if Bibi Netanyahu and the IDF cannot eliminate Hamas, eliminate the enemy, that enemy is already here. We are going to see that enemy rise up in the United States of America. We are going to see the same attacks happening. Just as we are split as a country right now politically, we are split over how we should deal with this issue. And that's why, again, Christians, evangelical Christians, Bible-believing Christians must stand up. We must rise up and say, not on our watch. They are using our own tax dollars to fuel these campaigns against our Jewish brethren. It's time for Israel to annihilate, wipe out Hamas once and for all. Why is um, anti-Semitism the exception to CRT? Well, 
CRT actually is anti-Semitism. If you look at the critical race theory and the curriculum that started out of California, and again, your audience can go to our website to get more information about this. If you're, if you're kind of confused about DEI, SEL, CRT, and all of, the, all of this garbage, we have three white papers that you can resource on the website. But this started, this whole ethnic studies curriculum that came out of California, they were challenged because they didn't include Israel or the Jews in their assessment. Unfortunately, what they don't understand is that the content in CRT distinguishes against the Jews. They got so they were so challenged by the Jewish community, they finally agreed, okay, we'll include in CRT that Jews of color will be included in this in this curriculum. Not white Jews, not Ashkenazi Jews. You have to have be Jews of color. This is so racist and it's so anti-Semitic, it's not even funny. But this is what we have now. This is why many states like Tennessee, like Florida, Governor DeSantis and Governor Lee ban CRT from being taught in their schools in their states. Yeah. But we have to have more, Perry. We've got to find more states, more governors, more state legislatures that are gonna ban CRT, are not gonna allow this to be taught because it is anti-Semitic. It is pro promoting Jew hatred to our children, K through 12. Lori, thank you. I wish I had you for a whole hour. I don't. Let me say to our viewers and listeners, go to pjtn.org. That's Lori's website. Um, support what she's doing. She's not only an advocate for Israel, she's an advocate for your children's curriculum across the country in school districts all over the place. And that's pjtn.org. Good to see you. Stay in the fight. Harry, God bless you. Thank you. You too.